Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my Tesla Model S Plaid in here and as much as I tried, I couldn't find any maintenance to do on this, like ever. So that means I gotta find stuff to tinker with and today that's going to be the headlights. Now these headlights have been around for almost 10 years now. Elon has promised us the full European intelligent light system adaptive headlights thing. Uh, many of you guys saw that I activated that on my E63 uh, a little while ago and it probably is one of the coolest headlight functions like ever. Now, whether or not that comes to fruition or not is still up for debate, uh, but I can tell you it's a 0% chance you're going to get it with these, and hopefully a pretty good chance that you're going to get it with these. So these are the Matrix headlights from the newer Teslas. And so this video, what's going to make it different than some of the other videos you've seen, is I'm going to show you start to finish how I did it. So the bumper pull, the install, the programming, the aiming, and also kind of a comparison at the end of the before and after. So here we go. Stay tuned. Over here on the pool table, I have everything you need to do the job. So you need two headlights. Obviously, I found these on eBay. Uh, anywhere between $400 and $1,000 for the set. Uh, you need two adapters to uh, plug them in. These are also found on eBay. I'll link everything below. And then you need a communicator device to connect your computer to the car. And so you can rent these. I'll give you a couple links below. I found it cheaper just to buy them. And they do need some special cables. And again, I'll link that below. And if your computer does not have an Ethernet cable, you do need to buy just an adapter to plug it into your laptop. And then just to dispel any rumors of anybody think this is some kind of hack coding job or whatever, this is actually a Tesla authorized procedure. The only difference is this comes from a Model 3 and we're doing it on a Model S. Otherwise, it is literally verbatim from these instructions. So before we start, I've uh, turned the headlights on and we're going to mark our current headlight alignment. The instructions say 25 feet and so we're going to block off each headlight and make little marks on the wall. Let's go ahead and take off all the plastics on here because there's a couple things I want to access. So now this lets us actually access our headlight plugs. So we can go ahead and unplug these. We're going to install our adapters. We're going to go ahead and take the headlights and plug them in. They are one-way plugs. So then the other thing we're going to do in here is I went ahead and hooked up Right here is a positive. I know you have a really good ground right here. And we're checking the health of our low voltage battery. So that battery dies while we're doing this. You can get all kinds of air. So, so the first thing we're gonna do is come over here to service Tesla. Go to diagnostic, diagnostic software. Well, this is a pleasant little surprise. I swear yesterday this was 165. Apparently now it's only 75 bucks for the day. Monthly 150, annually 700. That actually is a huge price difference. So we're gonna come over and hit daily, purchase, add to cart. So now that we've placed our order, we can actually go to toolbox. Uh, now we're in a toolbox, but we need to do a couple little things. We need to make sure that this page is not secure. We're gonna go over to settings. And then over here, you're gonna see privacy and settings. Under privacy, we're gonna go down to site settings. And then under site settings, if you scroll down on additional content settings down here, scroll down and you'll get to one that says insecure content. Click on insecure content, but you need to add toolbox.com. So basically that is just the website from toolbox. So now we need to connect it to the vehicle. It's pretty easy to get in there. You actually don't need to take this off, but it does make it easier. Just lift up near the base. This thing kind of just slides out of the way. Okay, and then right here, there's a panel that we're trying to get. Uh, basically, it's hooked in the back, and then there's two snaps we need to pull down. Uh, you can use a pry tool. I actually can get my fingers in there pretty easily. And it comes out, and here's the plug that we need to get to. As you can see, there's hooks in the back, so don't try to pull it down from the back. Snaps in the front. All right, so now here in the car, we can go and set up our little contraption. So we have the Rad Moon here. It has a cable that plugs in here and then a network cable that plugs into your computer. So we're going to go ahead and plug this into here. And then this is going to go into my computer. And then we are powering the Rad Moon with a USB-C. When you turn this on, I'll do this one more time. You actually need to hold down Slave, plug it in. It's going to start up and this is going to put it in a Slave mode. You're gonna get a blinking light here, and then we're good to go when both of these lights turn green. So we're gonna set that down. Now, back on our computer, and this may be an extra step. Some people say it works without doing this, but we're gonna come over here to IP4. 
properties. And we're going to set up the IP address, not automatically, but uh, manually. So use the following IP address. Again, this is in the description. We're going to set up a 192, 168, 90, 125, and then 255, 255, 255, zero. Hit OK. And it's now time to plug it into the car. So we'll go ahead and make the connection here. Turn the car on. So we're going to hit enable. This whole time I'm actually monitoring my battery voltage right now. So we're good. You can see as soon as we plugged it in, our Radmoon went to two solid greens and a blinking slave. Sorry, it's upside down. One thing it says in the Radmoon instructions is if you don't have green, you need to hold this down, any of these buttons for three seconds, and then that'll turn green. Back over to the laptop, and we're going to see if we can actually connect to the car. So now it shows that we are connected to the car. We're going to go up to just a dashboard. Under infotainment and dashboard, now we have all of our uh, kind of settings. Right here, there's one called headlamps. And so now to do this, all we need to do is come over here where it says premium. We're going to click on that. We're going to switch them to global. Come down here and hit apply changes. It says we've successfully updated the vehicle configuration. So now we can come over here. We're going to go to refresh configuration. We'll see if it's stuck. All right, so now we have headlamps global. The next step is come over here where it says software reinstall, and we're going to hit um, reinstall. Okay, so now it's going to reinstall the software. And what this is doing is now that we've changed the configuration, it's going to reinstall the correct software that has the headlight software in it. So while it's doing something, uh, I'll just kind of talk for a second. So I used to think that uh, we're probably just hacking into this and doing something uh, not official, but actually if you come over here, and go to electrical again this is the model three but i'm just showing this as kind of a um as an example come down here to exterior lights and check out what they have under exterior lights they literally have instructions on how to uh change it from regular to global and guess what the instructions we just did all come from here the only thing different about this is you have to do uh the harness uh there's not a, a factory harness yet but everything I just did is all underneath here. So it's actually technically an official procedure, um, not for the S, but for the three, which it has the same instructions. We can go ahead and exit service mode. Again. All right, so now we got both headlights kind of just sitting right here. So let's see what happens. We turn them on. Sweet. All right. So we have now coded our car to have these headlights. So now the fun part starts. We need to get the bumper off and install these headlights. Okay. So all the software part is done now. Now we actually need to install the headlights. And to do that, the bumper has to come off. Now you don't need a lift. Obviously you could do some jacks, but you do need to access the bolts that are kind of behind the wheel here, which involves turning the wheel to the side a little bit. And then underneath there's about six bolts we need to get to. So jack it up just enough that you can get to those bolts. So Let's do it. Now this might not be necessary, but it is in the instructions. So go over here to safety and then there's a power off button. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the power off to the car. So again, according to the instructions, we gotta undo the power from the low voltage battery. Pop up the green tab, slide the black part back and it lift straight up. And it, for some reason, it also wants us to undo the fireman loop, which is this red tab. Push down, completely disconnect. All right, so with the wheel slightly turned, you can pop off these just kind of with a pick. Center comes off. And then up here at the top is a T25. Couple more things to undo underneath here. There are three more of these pop. And this should allow you to kind of pull splash guard away. So now with all those clips out of the way, if you peek in here, there are two clips. I'll zoom in a little bit. Those are your entire bumper assembly. So we need to undo both of these and then the whole bumper is free from wires. So kind of pull this down out of the way. Sometimes these are easier if you actually push them back together, then pull out. 
Okay, now they're both disconnected. Same on this side. Now underneath we got a bunch of bolts to do with the 10 millimeter. There's three bolts in the middle here that don't need to be done. One thing I always highly recommend is putting a little masking tape for when you put the bumper back on. This just helps you make sure if you bump your paint at all, no damage will happen. So now that we're done underneath, now we just need to undo these six bolts. And now the only thing that's holding the bumper right now is just there, there's little snaps and it snaps into. So as we pull it out, the bumper can technically fall off. I'm sure this is easiest if you have somebody helping you. I do not right now. I'm actually kind of reaching my hand up here near the headlight and just kind of pushing out. This is usually when I accidentally drop the whole thing on the ground. In theory, nothing should be connected, so it should be good. So now you just need a good place to hold it. There we go. Actually, probably one of the easier bumpers I've taken off. Now we're just going to go to town with our 10 millimeter. Just going to loosen this one. Apparently that comes off. Old headlight out. And one thing about these is they actually don't have the clip in part that the new headlights have. So the other one should hold the bumper a lot better. See so yeah, if you check this out, this has this bracket bolted to the bottom that the bumper actually snaps into. So we'll go ahead and plug our headlight back in. And there you go, new headlights installed. Obviously I need to work on the fitment just a little bit. So there's a lot of play in these guys and we can kind of move it around to the position we need. I do have one installed and check this out. Here is the gap now. Perfectly smooth. You could probably fit just a, a feeler gauge in between there. Check out how the old headlight is. It literally has like a 10 millimeter going to 12 millimeter gap. First look at the headlights installed. No bumper obviously, but they both went on great. The gap looks perfect side to side. All right, so now we're gonna reinstall the bumper. I do have my kids out here to help. But the most important thing is just kind of take your time and kind of try to support it a little bit. I got about five pounds of water in the bottom of mine. And then make sure it doesn't scratch your headlights or your, uh, your fenders. I'm going to get it close. All right. That's good. All right. So now that it's kind of supported, we start kind of working it into its tabs. Cool. The bumper is back on. So now we're going to reinstall all the bolts and, you know, uh, make sure your, your body's flush before you actually tighten them. There's a lot of wiggle room everywhere intentionally. Now that the top's mostly buttoned up, we can go to the bottom and get all the screws set up and then we'll tweak our final body gaps. Now obviously don't forget to plug your bumper back in. All right, now we can go ahead and hook our power back on with our fireman loop first, then our battery, back down, black part in, blue part down. Connect it back up. And then the last thing we're gonna do is before we slam the hood, let's just make sure we have no contact we moved anything around with our headlights so body alignment looks great still have a perfect scene there and there we go all right so here are the new headlights installed and uh, i think they look really good especially on the stealth gray i think it, it really kind of improves it instead of having the silver lights in there the black housing so pretty happy with it all right so now that we have the headlights installed and working fine we can come down over here to service and hit adjust headlights. Headlights are gonna move around a little bit. Use the left scroll wheel to adjust your headlights. So we're doing left headlight right now. And you can kind of put it kind of where it was before. Now we're gonna go over to the right. So literally their whole procedure kind of has a line and you know a tape. We're just using the old marks on the wall. And then, um, you know, I guess the most important thing is you can kind of tell if you're blinding people. I like to go out usually after I do a baseline procedure like this and then actually go out on a roadway and I want to make sure that they hit the ground about two, maybe 250 feet away. Well, uh, once you're done, exit out and that is it.
So here's a bunch of comparison pictures and video that I did with my friend who has a 21 plaid with the old headlights. One thing I forgot to mention at the beginning of this video, this procedure is really only for the 21 and 22 refresh models only. But if you have a 16 through 20, you are actually in luck. I believe or have been told that there's a company called EV Offer that makes an adapter that allows you to install these on the earlier models. Now, obviously you can't code them. There's probably a very small chance that they'll ever do any adaptive function, but at least they are installable on the old ones. So I shot all these comparison videos and pictures with three different cameras, all with the exposure, f-stop, and ISO locked. Uh, so hopefully get a, an apples to apples comparison. The only thing that kind of distorts some of these pictures a little bit, the road we're parked on has quite a bit of a crown. So just kind of factored that in. But either way, they do have noticeably more light, noticeable range, and a much better cutoff line compared to the older headlights. So now I'm just kind of seeing what other stuff is in here that looks like you can change. You can actually change what kind of brakes you have. So you can actually change, do you want the regular Brembo's or the carbon ceramics? Caliper color, you can actually change that, I guess. Front seat type. So it looks like we have premium, a couple little different kinds, I'm not sure which one. Interior lighting. Premium or base, I'm not sure what the difference is there. Interior trim, carbon black. Rear fog lamps not installed. Rear light type. So you can switch between global and not, but then again, heard there's a lot of connector issues back there. Tow package. So you can turn on the tow package, that's kind of cool. 